Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Roll Wise Podcast, the show where we talk about RPG games and some stuff related to RPG games. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, a recent game that we had an opportunity to play, at least part of the quick starter. We're still um, we're still playing through a, a small scenario with it and everything like that uh, on our offline table, but uh, we actually had a chance to sit down and uh, one of our friends ran us through the game, the Discworld RPG uh, that has recently been kickstarted. The Kickstarter ended like, I think, uh, like the 6th of November or something like that. So a, a really recently in comparison to what this video is, it fully funded at a whopping 2.9 and a half million, 2.95, I don't know, whatever, million dollars. So it definitely showed a lot of interest. Um, and we thought we'd take today to talk about our experience with the game, how did how how did the quick start play, kind of our impressions of it, uh, as well as uh, share some information about it because we had... Uh, a lot of fun, even though Brent and I aren't uh, Discworld aficionados, I would say. Um, no, I haven't read very much of Terry Pratchett whatsoever and none of the Discworld series. Yeah, I, there's, I mean, I have obviously read like Good Omens and uh, a couple other books that my friend has recommended. But if anybody wanted to say I was an expert, I would. Well, I would, yeah, I I've read I've read Good Omens, but that's not a Discworld book, so no. <laughs> I wasn't counting it. I wasn't counting it for the purpose of this. I will say though that I do feel like Terry Pratchett is an author that has probably mm. influenced a lot of like my brain in media mm. without me reading him, just because a lot of my friends have read them. I think a lot of the authors that mm -hmm. Uh, I do enjoy having an influence by Terry Pratchett. Um, mm -hmm. And I think he's had a lot of influence on kind of fantasy and the kind of humorous side of things. So it, it does. I mean, like the, those are the books that I have read. They do have a certain um, quippiness to them. You know, there's a, a pluck to it that it's comedy despite the, despite the, I guess the, the plot, you know, maybe being a little bit heavier in some cases. Self manages to find a pretty funny through line and all those kind of things. And of course the characters are very, very interesting themselves. Punny. I think there's a lot of punny things in uh, Discworld. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, so about the game. Uh, the game itself is uh, the Discworld RPG. Um, there was at least one other Discworld RPG that had been made. Uh, the friend of ours that is a very big Pratchett Discworld fan um, did say mention that there was a GURPS RPG out there, mm -hmm. and you know, GURPS GURPS is could be played with anything kind of like fifth edition, but I tried to play GURPS. And uh, when I, when I was basically getting out my TI 85 calculator, I said, uh, it's, it's a very heavy game up front. Character creation is usually pretty lengthy and it's pretty crunchy really. Cause it's an old school framing for games. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty crunchy number wise, which I think, which I think is funny for Discworld Cause that doesn't fit. I really feel like that's a, that's going to be a situation where the rules don't, match up with the feel of the game it, um, it feels heavier than the game should be right <laughs> like a lot more now, well, mechanical it, than the game right just very rigid which mm -hmm. i don't think i uh, the, the, from what i know of pratchett and his his fiction uh that sort of rigid would be something that i don't think he necessarily appreciated whereas i think and we'll get to this a little bit later but i think the game that we played the new one really mm -hmm. is something that he would very much enjoy Mm -hmm. with the nature of his writing yeah so yeah and so this this newest version uh so in case anybody's wondering you can still back it as a late backer on the project um according to the website you can uh you can continue to use the back this project button to be a late uh late to the party kind of person so if you are interested you are a Discworld fan and you somehow missed this um you know you can still get involved in it and all that kind of stuff um but basically the game is the adventures in ankh -Mor more pork um and so the that's this the setting that you're going to be playing in seems to be in Ankh more pork um and so if you are familiar with uh certain books like the wa you know where the watch take a lot of presence in it or whatever it is i mean i think a lot of the books go through that um that is an, if you're a big fan of it that's where you're going to be hanging out most of your time. Uh, the initial quick start adventure that comes with it does take place also in Ankhmore Fork. So if you haven't actually got a lot of experience with the uh, with the setting, it kind of walks you through a little bit from what we understand so far. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a hell of a fun time. So the uh, the game itself, though, um, since it's not since it kind of went the opposite direction 
uh, GURPS. How would you describe the game, Brent? <laughs> uh so when we pulled up the characters um so there's five pre-gen characters that come in the quick starter mm -hmm. um they're all very interesting very um pratchett characters as far as i understand um but the first thing that you notice on the character sheet the thing that got me and made me kind of looking around and looking for a second page is there's no numbers on the game there's no stats per se there's one number up at the top luck yeah. and that's it um, but everything else is derived from basically text throughout the, you have, you have key attributes and it's mm -hmm. text on kind of describing your character and the way the mechanics works is anytime you can relate one of those, you have to, anytime you want to roll something, mm -hmm. you have to relate it to one of those abilities. And then the better mm -hmm. you re re relate it to one of those abilities, um, the GM decides on the, what dice roll that you, you yeah. roll. Um, like from I think starts at D four up to D D twelve is what he 12? said. Yeah. Um. So like, um, my character is, and there may be some spoilers in this. We're not going to spoil much because we didn't get through the whole adventure. Um. But just to spoil the, some of the NPCs, uh, my character was a dwarf. Um. Uh, member of the Watch who is a cameraman uh, or whatever. Right. Well, he's a. There's something. There's a classic. Uh. Ike iconographer or something iconographer or something like that um and basically it means he's a he's yeah he's a he's a cameraman he takes pictures of crime mm -hmm. scenes um and so if i can if say i want to investigate the scene and i'm really going to focus in with my camera and get a, the cleanest shot possible i can so mm -hmm. i can look at the camera i can take time looking at the picture and mm -hmm. figure out what happened like i would get a dice roll out of that potentially yeah yeah and that, and it's interesting because like the the weirdest part is is that you know the your ability to sell how your traits can be justified determines your potential level of success um, against the the GM's all encompassing narrativium die, and so the narrativium die is a d8 that the GM rolls in kind of opposition the narrative basically deciding if that's how the story should go. Um, and of course, your the day, the dice you roll is trying to beat that number. Now, the cool part about it is, is that some of your traits are very easy to match up to a situation. You know, it, you can have a trait that's like, uh, I'm the face of the party, so I'm going to try to convince them to do X. And of course, because you're you're you know you you say what you're doing to try to convince them, and because it's a more narrative style game, if you make a great argument and your trait matches, you could have a d12 um that could mean that if you roll 11 you could you automatically beat the narrativium die or um, if you have a good or if you make it a good pun yeah or if you make it a good pun you know you could automatically succeed uh in some of these cases according to what we were explained right. um, i'm pretty but, sure know. i'm pretty sure that sounds very very terry pratchett <laughs> so i'm pretty sure that's correct yeah so that was pretty so that was pretty cool um and so you know the the narrativium die you know the d8 if the if they roll a, a one you know even though you like stood around like a Disney princess trying to sing, you know, animals back to you. Uh, you could dragons, dragons. Yeah. But uh, but that's but that's kind of interesting. And then of course there is a get help option. So if you don't succeed, you know, you can spend luck to have your kind of companions try to help you. Um, and then of course uh, you go through the test. Uh, and everything. and then they have to tie a skill to your situation, and they can mm -hmm. help you. Yep. Oh. <laughs> so. It's very it's very interesting. I was very pleased at the mechanic because mm -hmm. it was very fun like it was just kind of a fun mechanic it was um kind of like uh just yeah just relating like i'm a dwarf i would know about gold or mining or mm -hmm. that's what i should have said i'm a dwarf i'd know about coal mining coal of course yeah, but see that's the and that's the, the but that's the interesting part about the game is that it breeds a level of creativity that you know you because you're you're defined by your traits, but you then take your traits and implement them in these situations. And it, it just breeds creativity for the scene. So if you have friends that are very creative and you really like, you know, getting into those kind of witty exchanges about things as to why some stuff works, because you can kind of lawyer it too a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you may not exactly fit the situation, but how can you twist it to fit the situation? Um, it's uh, kind of an interesting play. And I think this game is important because, or interesting, and I think it's important in the game to think that 
I, in, in being, the rules being described to me and reading the character sheet, I think the main thing that my goal is, like, making the other players at the table laugh. Like, if you, I figure that's, that's, that's when, I think that's when this game works the best, is when mm -hmm. you take that skill and you say, oh, I know about dragons because whatever you make up that applies to whatever skill that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get a chuckle from somebody out of that, or you get a good pun out of it, and they chuckle. I think that's the source of the game. Like the game encourages you to try and make the table laugh, which I think is a is is a really, I think it's really cool because there's a lot of games that don't take that into consideration. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's a it was a nice break from some of the more serious games we've been taking. And I don't usually mm -hmm. like comedy games, so um, well, it's I was it's, impressed. So I think the interesting part is, is you can still frame a very interesting story around it um, using the narrative thing. And I think that the the part that's kind of to compare and contrast, I mean, we literally just played Cosmere, another game that hopefully roped in a bunch of non-role players and everything like that that could try to play the game. The thing is, is because that's based on the kind of a, a D and D fifth edition D20 type rule set, the rules are fairly heavy you know you have a lot to keep track of um so even though they walk you through a lot of that stuff and you make some very interesting characters using the mechanics presented the um the, you know as a new player it might be a little bit daunting what i really liked is just the simple way that they created the system to be like if you were a new person like I mean, it takes 10 minutes to learn how to play the game in its current quick start format. If there's more to it, I mean, maybe we'll see when the actual game comes out. Yeah. But it took, what, 10 minutes to learn how to play the game and we were off to the races? Yeah, like, for us, I sort of disagree. Yeah. Um, Ooh, I disagreement. Think, <laughs> I think, well, I'm always, I'm always back to that uh, performance, I think, is the harder part for new players. Mm -hmm. um, like, if you're playing D&D &D or Cosmere, which is a little bit different than D&D, &D, I'm not comparing mm -hmm. them. Please don't hate no, me for no, that. No, 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 no. They're, hey, they're no, 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 no. Wait. Hate me for what I'm about to say. Um, not that part. But what I mean is like D20, everybody kind of knows there's what a D20 is, and you can always default to rolling that D20. You can always say, I'm going to negotiate, and then, mm -hmm. but I can't think anything, so I'm just going to roll my dice and see how well I do. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this game, you're really putting people on the spot and being like, okay, make something up. Yeah. okay improv this situation and i feel like that's usually more intimidating unless you have like people that are experienced in theater or something like that or experienced role players well, i feel like that can be intimidating to people but I, and, and maybe but I, I my counterpoint would be is that i feel like if you you know if you lay the groundwork for it you know and basically give them the because it's it's not like devoid of anything and they don't need to improvise everything and it also doesn't mean you have to go in there and talk with funny voices and get all into character you can just literally be like okay well i try to investigate i'm a member of the watch so i feel like i'd be good at investigating right you know and so i mean that that doesn't take too much that, that would and that's a lot easier for me than you know, somebody like because the one thing I have about but, SR games and stuff like that mm -hmm. is that sometimes that self insertion, like I need to be smart enough to solve the problem, does present itself here too. Like it does. But know, what I'm so I guess here, so okay, so mm -hmm. hypothetical, you're playing the game with with your person who is experienced as role playing games, they're used to role playing, mm -hmm. uh, and they're good at, at inserting character into like speaking with mm -hmm. the character's voice, not necessarily doing a voice, but you know. Mm -hmm. And they're relating all their they're relating their traits to things, and they're getting higher dice rolls. You're the person that's not comfortable with that, and you're saying, "Oh, I investigate because I'm a member of the Watch." You're getting your D4 or you're getting your D6 because you're not relating it to the ability of somebody else. That's going to be daunting eventually because they're not going to they're not going to succeed as much. I don't think. I, I think it's there's a lot of room for growth, but I think this would be this is one of those games that a lot of people are going to say, "I think this is a good starting game," which mm -hmm. I think would be difficult because oh, I know when. I know as an introvert, when I started like role playing, mm -hmm. like it took a lot to get me to it even still does sometimes. Yeah. Well, but I think I think the the part to it is for me is that like that first of all, this game seems like it's designed for small stories. It's not mm -hmm. designed for an epic, you know, jaunt across the land to, you know, find the dragon's horde and all that D and D type stuff. Um, so you're not going to see a lot of combat in things like that, which sometimes is kind of how action is inserted into these more fantastical games. But I feel like, you know, with the with the 
the reward and everything like that. You know, I mean, a, a DM could help somebody who's not good with that to be like, mm-hmm. You know, here it is. Or, you know, even other players at the table could like help because like that's what we did. We were like, well, how could we help? You know, and obviously we'd come up with puns after the fact and be like, oh, shit. Yeah. And I think it helps in those kind of things. And as a starter game, to your point, I think, I, you know, honestly, we played me and, me and my wife played Rice's. You know, I think that she could easily do, go into this game because she wouldn't she doesn't want to have to learn D20 style game. You know, she's just like, OK, well, yeah. tell me what I need to roll. Well, because you made a compelling, you know, an argument, sort of compelling, I give you a D8, at least bare minimum, right? You know, and I think as a GM, you know, like you could you could say like, oh, that's maybe not as good of an approach as this. Maybe you try that instead, you know? And, and no, I don't know. I feel like I feel like we could have different takes on this one. I, I, no, I think I, it's I, a great I, beginning game, so. I think, I, I think it just depends on the person, I guess. But true. Because... Because like I said, you can always, there's like, I'm thinking of when when I played Fiasco with some new people Mm -hmm. and like Fiasco was hard and it wasn't hard because they didn't have, they weren't having fun. It was hard because you're asking them to do an improv comedy spot. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, that's kind of difficult. And while this has, this has a little few more rails to it than like Fiasco does, I feel. Mm -hmm. Um, And you're right. The GM could definitely help and, and, you know, and lob things their direction. But there's still that moment where you're put on the spot a little bit, and I can see that being daunting at first. Sure. Yeah. Whereas, whereas in D20, you can put them on the whereas like a D20 game, you can put them on the spot, and then it's like, uh, I don't know. Investigation okay, go, roll. Okay, go ahead and roll your right. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's fair. I mean, it it is it is always nice to have the mechanical like your character is good at this, but you're not. So please just roll because you don't have like right. it's like when well, we were I, doing. I like, also know people who would really excel at this game because they're very mm-hmm. outgoing and they would enjoy that part of the game 100 percent. like the mechanics would matter at all they would just yeah. they, would, they would just have a black i mean like i said yeah, you just, just you have these descriptors. Uh, you just have these neat descriptors that you play with and all that stuff and and right. truth be told i mean i thought it, i mean it's a nice i think you said it best it was a good palate cleanser you know we've been playing mm-hmm. some pretty heavy games recently and so this was this kind of a nice light-hearted fun evening that we uh and it was ve- it was really weird looking at the character sheet and thinking there's no numbers on this what, the f- what? <laughs> this is this is too easy this but is that weird. also that's probably but also you- why our friend friend ran it so yeah you said there's there's something else you were gonna say and i interrupted you i'm sorry i don't remember moving on uh, moving on so um so needless to say uh brent and i have different um opinions on maybe who well we probably share the same opinion that there are certain types of people that will excel at this game more naturally than others but i don't think that as a beginning i think as a beginning game this is very flexible for any kind of beginner because you're not going to overwhelm them with a three-page character sheet you just literally go imagine the person you want to be write some stuff out about them and let's see how they play um and so and 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 this is partially from me being an extremely introverted, introverted person sometimes Sure. Um, whereas I, I would have a hard time mm-hmm. do, I mean, I mean, I still occasionally have a hard time in front of people. It takes, it takes a little bit of warming up to the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so this wouldn't have, this would not have been a good first game for me, uh, <laughs> if I hadn't started role playing young, I would say. Oh, fair enough. I mean, I, and you know, I don't know. I, I, I'd, I'd be curious to see how it plays with some other folks. I might, I, I mean, I'm not, the, the hardest part is, is that I'm not really a, like a huge Pratchett fan. So I, I don't know if I could generate my own stories in disc right. world very easily, but I could de- easily, tr- I mean, it, it seems like the, the starter adventure in there doesn't need like a million a lot of people knowledge. to play. And it, since combat isn't the story, you know, you could play it with one or two people very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I not really have it limited other than the fact that just having one person, they might, you know, cause the spotlights on them the entire time. It's up to them to, make the game interesting move, move everything yeah <laughs> and that that's that's another thing is it is very much a player driven mm-hmm. it is very much a player driven game you are very much at the beholden of how much the players invest in what they're doing yeah well and i and i they think try that, and wander off right away from the adventure or not just, just because i was sabotaging on my own <laughs> don't, don't need to call it out every time um no but it but it is funny because uh um you know, it, it just, it, it's, like I said, you could have a lot of fun with it. And I think we had a lot of fun. And that, because there's not a lot of mechanics to talk about, this game is, I mean, we've, that's the game. Now, mm-hmm. whether or not you feel like mechanically that's up your wheelhouse or anything like that, that's, that's up to you. 
But I do think that if you are interested, they did do some pretty good because of how much money they raised and everything like that. They had some really cool source books and everything like that um, that they unlocked to really kind of flesh out the world, like Hog's Watch Adventure Book. You know, they have Lesser Known Streets of Ankh Morpork and then the Ankh Morpork Through the Ages book. You know, so so there were definitely some things that would make the the setting more rich, especially for a person like me who would probably benefit from. <laughs> <laughs> from having yeah. like a little if more knowledge it. about it uh, if I was running it. But I mean, that's just kind of me, I guess. I like the first thing. One of the first things that I thought about in playing this game was what mm-hmm. are other games that I could, th- these rules could be pinched for. Mm. Um, like I think the, I think the narrative break of the, the game, the, the, I think it's just brilliant. Like, I think the, 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 just purely narrative character is even though I'm, I'm saying it would be difficult for new people. I think it's brilliant. Like, I think just being like, Hey, who, who what's your name? What's a little bit of background and do the, tell us these things about your character. Like these, mm-hmm. these things. Okay. That's your character. This is how the dice works. I, I bet you could make some really fun adventure stories. Like, um, you know, um, what are the what are those uncharted adventures? I bet it, you know those are a little bit action heavy, but like Indiana Jones, you could easily have kind of a pulpy, you know. Uh, man, I think this would be great for like um, a surrealist over the edge style, style game, mm, like could. sort of like surreal adventure. Like I think it would be great where combat isn't necessarily the focus of the game. Mm-hmm. I think it would be I think it would be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, any really any game where you don't want to actually play out the fighting, this this feels like you could insert it into that or any setting really. So yeah, I I would be interested to see if Modiphius pinch it, like uses this sort of rules, um, later for yeah. other games. I think that could be really neat. It could be, and it's just it feels like it's so light. You can just all you really need to do is just start writing source books for it, right? You know, right. You just yeah, and, setting books. Yeah, yeah. You just make setting books, and then I'll, I mean, you have a blurb in the beginning about how to play, and then boop. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of a surprise to me that no one's really done a game quite like this before. Like this is or, this was the, this was the newest mechanic that I've personally played. There might be other games out there that do it, but this is the first game that I've ever played like this. Yeah, and if you have seen a game that does a similar traits, quirks, and roles yeah, against that narrative play. thing, let us know. We'd like to really see how those games play in execution because we've played heavier narrative games, but um, you know, not diceless per se, you know, or anything like that yet. But I I would say that this would be interesting. It would be interesting to see what your guys' feedback on this very minimalist rule set. Because I think this is this is minimalist rules as opposed to rules light almost. Like because this is so light that it's <laughs> <laughs> well, the quick starter is, I mean, it's, I, I consider, I consider minimalist and rules like pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's very, it's just very narrative. Like it's even more narrative than like, uh, where, where like, uh, Powered by the Apocalypse goes to where it's very rigid in what like its story form is and its free formness. This is very much just like, I don't know, write some stuff on a, on a, on a piece of paper and that's your character. More to the point like that, I think that's one place that's like, over the edge three had that where it was like, oh, write some stuff on the paper and that's your character. But like it, it was more confusing of a free form than this, whereas this has some very clear rules, but it's very open. And I think that's what, what really hmm. makes it feel creative. Yeah, I still still like that the narrativium dies. Because <laughs> yeah. whether or not the narrative allows it, I guess, is the that's a very thing. Pratchett, Pratchett word and concept, narrativium. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. So, yeah. so needless to say, uh, the project is secure. But if you, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, that seems like a pretty good home run um, for for a Pratchett RPG. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, so uh, I'm excited because, I, as you know, as everybody who watches this channel on the regular knows that we like playing games that aren't, you know, the same type of game all the time. We really like to figure out other types of games out there. So, um, if you have another game that you find has a unique rule set um you know how it how you play the game mechanically let us know um we're not above checking out all the different games out there uh we have some on our list that we are still planning to explore um you know we got possibly cthulhu confidential coming up we've got um avalon rising has an alpha that we were thinking about playing you know we just have to figure out some gaps (laughs) and uh and there's, uh, lots of, there's lots of games out there and before. so the list goes on and on but we are not afraid to uh we're not afraid to challenge ourselves to more games i mean i think this year if we we're, if we play our cards right 
will have hit will hit 24 games mm, roughly that, yeah that's i think sounds that's, about right unless unless we get like really crazy during the holidays but <laughs> <laughs> that's probably not gonna happen probably not but uh, we can always try um so yeah let us know your thoughts uh did you pick up the game are you a Discworld fan uh, do you are you excited for how the game has it has implemented their own set of rules and do you feel like it's you know matches the spirit of this world let us yeah. know We're in really honor of terry pratt in honor of terry pratchett uh share us your terry pratchett's favorite terry pratchett moment or something in the comments um something tied to one of the books or something like that because i really feel like one of the things that i think is great about this game is i really feel like terry pratchett would have enjoyed the mechanics that that are in the game like i can i really feel like it fits with something that he would have enjoyed from what i know of what i've read mm -hmm. and know of terry pratchett the, the the artist and author um i think the idea of you know four or five people playing in his world making puns and laughing all night would have probably been something he really enjoyed i think so i mean it's it'd been fun i think it would have been good not taking themselves too seriously <laughs> well yeah i mean that was always that was one of his biggest things no. so all right well uh we'll keep this one short because uh, again there's not a lot of mechanics to really pick through and all that stuff but we just wanted to make sure that people were aware of the game it seems like it had a pretty good reception so but we wanted to spread the word because we played it and we enjoyed the heck out of it and had a great time um so yeah uh how do people talk to us brent <laughs> uh in english usually um go ahead and you can reach out just to us on our socials at rollwise pretty much on all the socials blue sky uh x uh instagram you can also reach us by emailing at rollwise no you can also email us <laughs> by uh emailing rollwise guys at gmail.com uh and uh yeah mm, yep yeah yeah rollwise at roll rollwise guys at gmail.com yep, that's it rollwise guys uh, at gmail.com say it again please 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 uh like subscribe uh if you enjoy our content or anything like that we should have said that at the beginning again um but uh yeah let us know talk to us in the comments and as always roll well roll wise and be safe out there yeah we'll chat with you guys later